Hello students, welcome to the theory class, principles of plant breathing. Today's topic is on plant breathing methods, the general and the special. By the end of this class, you will be able to answer the following questions. What are the different types of plant breathing program? Why there are differences between breathing methods for a different mode of pollination or propagation? You will be able to understand what is mass selection, pure line selection and multi-line selection. You will be able to answer what are the pros and cons of the three different breathing methods, mass selection, pure line selection, multi-line selection. Breathing methods can be classified into two broad categories. First one general breathing method and another one special breathing methods. Other general breathing methods we have here are the conventional breathing methods which were discovered well before the special breathing methods were discovered. So these uh, special breathing methods are known as advanced method of plant breathing uh, which you can see here it was discovered all of these are discovered in the recent history compared to all this okay so we're going to classify and we're going to discuss one by one <coughs> based on the mode of propagation and mode of pollination which can be categorized as uh, the plant the crop plants can be classified into sexually propagated crop plants and sexually propagated crop plants and sexually propagated crop plants then again can be classified into self pollinated crops and cross pollinated crops the reason why we classifying why we are classifying the breeding methods into certain categories is they have different level of uh, creating variations so in self pollinated crop plants only 5% of cross pollination is possible in cross pollinated crop plants more than 50% of cross pollination is possible and in asexually propagated crop plants the amount of cross pollination is less because the although it is a cross pollinated crop plant <coughs> it takes two to three years one or two years to uh, flower and then produce seeds so breeding methods can be classified into self pollinated crop plants for cross pollinated crop plants and then asexually propagated crop plants although there are some breeding methods which can commonly work on all these we'll discuss that at the end after the discussion of breeding methods for all this first coming to breeding methods of self pollinated crop plants <coughs> these breeding methods can be classified based on the mode of creation of variation first one is selection next is hybridization and selection and the third one being only hybridization so under selection which is selection of superior variety and getting it over in the next generation <coughs> we have mass selection pure line selection and multi-line breathing program and under hybridization and selection program we are going to have a cross between two parents diverse parents producing f1 selfing of which will produce f2 generation heterozygous population from which we, are, we can select individuals of superior ones and carry it over for further generations uh, further segregating generations and then we can select superior ones from it until and unless we have a homozygous line superior homozygous lines <coughs> so under this we have p degree method and modifications of pre-degree methods such as bulk population method and single seed descent methods and then next we have hybridization or also known as uh, heterosis breathing in this case we are going to uh, have a cross between two parents A and B for example here which will produce a heterotic parent <coughs> so uh, this is a type of breeding program which uh, which targets which goal is to produce f1 hybrids rather than to produce a homozygous line from the f1 line so <coughs> looking into the first type of breeding method first uh, breeding method which is mass selection it is an oldest breeding method and it is applicable to both self pollinated crop plant cross pollinated crop plants Farmers use this ever since the agriculture has started by selecting the desirable plants and continuing it and proceeding it to the next generation. And so that's why it is considered as an engine art. 
and we can see a schematic diagram of the steps it is the simplest one uh, selection of superior similar plants and compositing it mixing it then we are going to grow it into the next generation allowing random pollination so in this case <coughs> we can also see uh, another type of uh, diagram here where from a population of 200 to 2000 plants we are going uh, similar and desirable plants are going to get uh, selected and we are going to grow with the check varieties or, com uh, or control varieties which are popular <coughs> and superior lines are going to be selected and it is going to proceed into the next generation which passes the preliminary yield trial and then uh, we are going to go for multi-locational trial in farmers field or research field areas and then <laughs> later on if it passes if it uh, surpasses the requirements of the multi-line uh, multi-locational trial so it will be released as a variety mass selected variety and coming to some of the features of mass selection <coughs> the population it is a population improvement method which increases the desirable genes and most of the time desirable gene is associated with additive genetic variants so it is basically selection of additive genetic variants and selection is based on phenotypic characters rather than genotypic characters so it is not pure selection and mass selection is imposed only once and if it is imposed uh, multiple times it is known as a recurrent mass selection so mass selection can be or in two ways uh, mass selection can the, do can be done in one step or in multiple step improvement for variability <coughs> which are already present in the population only because we cannot create a new variation with selection we can only select uh, for the variety which is already present in the population and next is improvement uh, for performance of the base population so likewise uh, we can only improve the base population we cannot create a new variation for creating a new kind of variation we need mutation or we need hybridization which uh, from a different parent so in this uh, the next one we have uh, types of mass selection mass selection can be done uh, in two different uh, types positive selection selection of desirable parents desirable lines and selection of undesirable lines so selection can be <coughs> yeah, from the base population from a base population we can select desirable lines and in case of negative selection from a, a group of desirable lines if we see any we uh, off type plants selection or roguing out that that off type plants is called uh, negative selection <coughs> This uh, removal or roguing of off type plants, negative selection is usually practiced in uh, <coughs> seed production plot to increase the genetic purity. Next, coming up, uh, we have uh, the success of mass selection mainly depends on three factors. First of all, the variability which is present in the base population. So, in this base population, we have variability, some of the lines are having superior showing superiority and some of the lines are having inferiority and disease infestations so this is a good population from where we can start a selection program <coughs> rather than a uniform population and a mode of inheritance whether it is uh, dominantly inherited or recessive inherited whether or whether it is a heterozygous genotype so we can see here two, four different types of uh, possibility of a cross uh, crossing between capital T capital T homozygous type and crossing between capital T small t uh, selfing which produce um, one is to two is to one genotype and crossing between um, a back cross between a capital T small t and capital T capital producing one is to one ratio of the parental type and then selfing of uh, small uh, small t small t producing all small t types and then heritability of the character heritability of the character uh, <coughs> means 
the amount of genetic variance out of the phenotypic variance although we have already studied that phenotypic variance is equal to genetic variance plus phenotype uh, environmental variance so in this case we uh, uh, it is a condition in which one of the tree is applied with deficient nutrient condition and another one is applied with sufficient amount of uh, nutrient conditions so if the genetic variance is high but uh, the superior ones will perform better than the inferior ones in both this type of um, medium so heritability of the character is again a factor for selection in uh, mass selection next coming up is and there are uh, uh, some of the defects of mass selection <coughs> In mass selection and cross pollinator, usually in cross pollinated crop plants, there is no control on pollination. Random pollination takes place, and at the same time, insect pollination takes place or birds pollination takes place. So there is no control on it. So there is all kinds of genetic admixtures, and it is not pure. And next one is selection is based on phenotype only. The selection is not based on the genotype, so it's not pure. The, the genetic constitution is not pure because it may be of uh, the uh, or dominant the dominance genetic variance that you select it may be of capital T capital T or capital T small t it may be homo homozygous or it may be heterozygous later on if it is if it is heterozygous type if it is a heterozygous type it will produce a different progenies different progenies or if it is a homozygous type it will produce the same type of superior progenies okay so it so it uh, does have an effect on the <coughs> the progenies the mass selection and some of the modifications which are done uh, in mass selection are rejection of inferior plants that means uh, negative selection is done use of composite pollen is done <coughs> uh, fertilization of pollen uh, fertilization of stigma with multiple pollen so as to ensure uh, fertilization and production of more amount of seeds more amount of produce stratified method of uh, stratification of field which is also known as stratified mass selection <coughs> also known as grid method of mass selection which is which was suggested by Gartner in 1961 and uh, uh, to start with uh, the stratified mass method, uh, method of mass selection constitutes a group of base population from which we are going to <coughs> divide the field plot into several different grids or several different blocks where 40 uh, each of the plant contains 40 to 50 plants each so in this <coughs> 640 is divided into 40 each in 16 different plots okay and then from these 40 plants we are going to select few lines which are superior say for example 7 is selected from 40 in each of the block and then from the later generation from the from each generation uh, the selected 7 plants is then we are going to composite it and we are going to grow it in the next generation so this is called as stratified method of mass selection rather than just compositing the whole group by random matting. Next coming up is application of mass selection. <coughs> it is applicable to maintain the purity of an existing variety because we are not going to create a new variety. We are going to maintain the uh, variability in the new variety and we are going to <coughs> maintain the purity of it. Next is to develop a variety from a base population created by hybridization. Right after the hybridization program, we have F2 and F3 population, which are segregating populations. So we can develop a variety from the base population as such. And next is to preserve the identity of an established variety and well, uh, variety or soon to be released a new variety. So this is also important. <coughs> the the new variety can be uh, the new variety which is which was recently developed can be preserved with mass selection by uh, allowing random pollination and then uh, then compositing and growing in the next generation and then uh, some breeders use mass selection as a part of their breeding program to rogue out undesirable plants which is 
which so happens in case of seed production program in case of seed production program the genetic purity is improved by removing the undesirable off type plants Uh, coming to the pros and cons, the some of the advantages here are it is a rapid, simple and straightforward method. It is inexpensive to conduct. It is simple and the, the variety is phenotypically fairly uniform even though it is mixture of pure lines. <coughs> and some of the dis disadvantages here are the trait of interest should have high heritability. The trait of interest have high heritability, should have high heritability otherwise selection of uh, should be uh, maybe the, the the genotype it may be an effect of the environment rather than the genotype the less phenotypic uniformity uh, less phenotypic uniformity rather than other procedures <clears throat> compared to pure line varieties where you, you can see uniformity in the population you can see uh, diverse uh, rather Ununiform population in this with uh, dominance uh, heterozygous and undistinguished from the dominant uh, dominant genotypes. And so in these individuals, selection of a superior uh, a superior plant type can be in two different uh, genotypes: capital T, capital T, or capital T, small t. Tall type, if you select, it can be of capital T, capital T, capital T, small t. So you won't be able to identify whether it is heterozy heterozygous or homozygous. So that is one of the problem. The next uh, method is pure line selection. <coughs> pure line is a homozygous progeny of a self pollinated homozygous plant. Some of the key features of pure line selection is <coughs> they are homozygous lines. By means homozygous line, it means the uh, the two homologous chromosomes which are contributed from both the parents father and mother are having identical alleles on all the loci <coughs> that means you can see here all the loci present here are all same are, are smaller smaller capital P capital P capital A capital A small b small b except capital C and small c so when there is presence of a heterozygous uh, loci uh, in the homologous chromosome it won't be called as uh, homologous chromosome homozygous line because it all has to be same <coughs> rather it will be called as isogenic lines and uh, another feature is non heritable variation variation which is caused in the uh, in the pure line is it is due to environment <coughs> because all the individuals are having genotypically similar individual uh, all the individuals are genotypically similar so any uh, differences from one individual to another it is because of the environment it is because of the uh, fluctuation of either irrigation or either it may be due to fertilizer and so and so uh, next thing is it is highly uniform one individual is quite similar to another because they are all genetically same and next thing is selection is ineffective since we are having since um, we are having genetically similar plants and the differences which might occur in among them may be because only due to environment which is unlike that of heterozygous uh, heterogeneous population where heterogeneous population genotypic uh, all the individuals are genotypically different okay so that is why uh, selection is ineffective in these lines okay and because of uh, uniformity high amount of uniformity the genetic base is narrow and uh, there, less, there is lesser chances of adaptation to an, any new environment and because of narrow genetic base it is more prone to new disease insects and pests as you can see here uniform population which is quite uh, easily infested by disease and pest. Next coming up here is <coughs> a pure line uh, theory which was developed by Johansson in French bean <coughs> uh, variety called princess variety in 1903. So uh, from a mixed lot of uh, bean or princess variety we have uh, several different seed size Okay, from these several different seed size, he has taken small seed size, one lot, uh, one seed with small seed size, and another with 
large seed size from these large and small seed size he started producing progenies okay from the progenies uh, even in the progenies he started to observe differential seed size so the average seed size when he started weighing of from the from the seed which is selected from the small seed it is 0 0.351 while from the aver average progeny seed of the seed selected from the large seed is 0 0.64 grams you can see a significant difference in the seed weight of <coughs> the diff two different seed sizes selected from the seed lot but when the seeds uh, the, the progenies are grown from the small and large seed size from the small seed, si seed slot and the progeny rows are grown from the uh, large and small seed size of the large seed plot so it is showing very less difference in the progeny and the progeny and the parental type and both the progenies this shows that there is that the progeny uh, performance indicates the performance of the individual and which is <coughs> uh, phenotypic selection uh, phenotypic selection is not the purest form of selection but progeny selection is the uh, more genuine compared to uh, phenotypic selection only and and it also shows that the mixed lot of bean is mixed of pure lines uh, next here we have here is uh, the flow chart of pure line selection procedure so in the first year we are going to have a base population of 200 to 3000 plants from which we are going to select 200 superior plants based on the progeny performance these are lines indicating the selected uh, superior plant growing its progeny rows all the rows here in one line all the lines uh, all the plants in these lines are going to be uh, seeds harvested from the superior lines so we have here 11 superior lines and from these 11 superior lines we are going to reject inferior undesirable plants and we are going to finally select four different uh, superior lines out of which we are going to <coughs> uh, go for preliminary yield trial with the <coughs> with the control or check local variety so if it passes if the four superior lines passes the preliminary yield trial it's going to we are going to uh, treat it for multi locational trial if we are aiming to release the variety in several places we are going to release we are going to do multi locational trials in several places or in a particular region <coughs> like farmers field uh, research uh, field station such and such and then if it fulfills if the multi locational trial is uh, found to be if the variety is found to be stable in all the locations so it uh, so it fulfills the multi locational trial and it will be released as a variety next is application of pure line breeding system in which uh, <coughs> the first objective uh, the first application is on uh, uh, the <coughs> easy to use with the mechanical harvester which is high end equipment which have been running all over in the world and in developed uh, first world countries where in this case uh, uniform maturity at the same time of the crop plan is much required because uh, uh, uniform ununiformity in the uh, maturity which takes two to three more pickings will not assist will not make it uh, user friendly for such harvesters make, uh, <coughs> and uh, it gives a good visual appearance of uniformity of such varieties and then processing market in processing market there is a high demand for high pulp quality and uniform pulp quality and, and canning qualities so such a um, such a uh, MN objective can be fulfilled by pure line breeding program <coughs> uniformity in pulp production and canning qualities and then improve improving new domestic newly domesticated crops that have been uh, that have some variability uh, some of the introduced varieties can also be <coughs> improved with pure line selection uh, some of the advantages here can be mentioned as it is a rapid method of breeding because it doesn't involve high-end uh, <coughs> uh, breeding method uh, it doesn't involve crossing program it just one step 
enhanced to mass selection which is progeny selection this method is inexpensive to uh, inexpensive to conduct because it doesn't require much sophistication and it doesn't require uh, much labor the variety developed by this method has great eye appeal because all the varieties are uniform they are they are pure lines it is applicable to improve traits of low heritability because we are going to select based on the progeny performance not on the phenotypic performance of the individual suppose in such case uh, where ma in mass selection we are going to look into the phenotypic performance only but in certain case if the due to low heritability the phenotypic performance didn't show up so uh, the progeny performance ensures that the genotypic variation counts for the selection or into the next breeding program <coughs> or next generation uh, next uh, next here is uh, we have uh, disadvantages of pure line selection the pure purity of the variety may be altered through admixtures okay uh, during storage and during uh, <coughs> seed uh, during mechanical harvesting so the all kinds of genetic impurities may come up uh, so this is an advantage here and in case of uh, pure line breeding program genetic purity is a much and narrow genetic base is one of the problem here which is again poor adaptability and invites disease and insects and next one is a narrow uh, a new genotype is not created because we are going to select from the base population only the the, the variation is from the base population only and it is not from uh, a new <coughs> source the method promotes genetic erosion so as we have already discussed it promotes narrow genetic base and uh, and because of that uh, the varieties pure line varieties are low adaptable and and it invites uh, disease and infest and disease and insects progeny rose takes up more resources it, it takes time and space when you compare between mass selection and pure line selection pure line selection has an added uh, uh, year or a breeding program which is known as individual plant progenies compared to all the others which are there in mass selection so <clears throat> one more year or one more time or, or one more lab, uh, laborers year is wasted uh, or you can say it is uh, invested in uh, pure line breeding program only applicable to it, it is applicable to self planted crop plants while in case of uh, mass selection it can be applicable to self planted crop plants and cross planted crop plants next we have here is multi line breeding which was first suggested by jensen in oats in 1952 <coughs> multi lines are developed specifically for self planted crop plants <coughs> So multi-line means what it is a it is a group of component lines which has uh, similar phenotypic character, similar agronomic character, and at the same time similar uh, genotypes in all, of all the component lines except for one gene. Say for example, in certain cases, uh, most of the multi-lines are developed for disease resistance and insect resistance. So. <clears throat> The component lines are called as isogenic lines, where the differences between the component lines are only because of uh, only single loci, uh, allelic presence of different allelic uh, differences in allele, alleles in the single loci and not <coughs> to other loci. Okay, and iso lines are developed primarily for disease control. Okay, uh, like I said. It is. It was developed. Multi lines are usually developed for uh, disease controls, and even though some of them are usually, uh, uh, some of them are uh, having a multi line breeding program is applicable for environmental stress because uh, abiotic stress resistance uh, are uh, are governed by uh, polygenic variants, and in polygenic variants, the several minor genes. Uh, have a cumulative effect on the major gene uh, have a cumulative effect on the character which is polygenic trait so in this case several minor genes works on working on the character K 
can be uh, working on a character can be <coughs> uh, implemented as uh, one of the breeding objectives uh, to fulfill the abiotic stress resistance so so uh, so, uh, in simple words, multi-line breathing can be applicable to uh, both uh, oligogenic gene resistance, like say for example, biotic resistance, uh, insect-based resistance, and then environmental stress resistance, abiotic stress resistance, having carrying minor gene for uh, several several minor genes acting in cumulative manner. Okay, uh, and in case of um, isolines isolines which are component lines these are developed by back cross breeding program although we have already learned that in back cross breeding program we have two component lines which is um, parent um, two parents which are donor parent and recurrent parent when we cross the donor parent and recurrent parent we are going to have an f1 and f1 is going to uh, continuously cross uh, <coughs> repeatedly cross to the recurrent parent uh, and in f2 uh, in bc1 population where if we cross if we sell the bc1 population so it will develop uh, it will develop into bc1 f2 population which is a heterogeneous population having differences in only one or few of the loci okay or one of the loci so the product given here is called near isogenic lines okay uh, and which are having uh, similar genotypic constitutions except in one of the loci which is having uh, which uh, which is having and different alleles for the same gene okay in the loci so <coughs> uh, coming to the uh, characters which uh, confers to itl multiline variety it has a genetic diversity it is great genetic diversity because <coughs> Uh, because in pure line what happens is because of uh, presence of only one type of uh, plant we don't have uh, we have uh, homozygosity and narrow uh, we have narrow genetic base but because if say for example the diversity the uh, the, the differences in the loci here are because of uh, are because of the differences in the disease resistance of a particular strain or disease resistance of a particular insect or disease resistance of different strains of a particular pathogen so it can act as a durable resistance <coughs> okay so if one of the uh, one of the resistance mechanism fails due to the uh, evolution of new strain of pathogen so others might work on the resistance mechanism okay others which are remaining there which which were not working uh, during the <coughs> resistance mechanism of the previous generation it may work in the next generation or few generations so this act as a durable resistance and it, it com uh, component should be uniform agronomically so because other agronomy other genes which are located in other loci except this are uniform they are all uh, they are <coughs> they are uh, agronomically similar uh, when we observe on the field plot <coughs> and it should have high yield advantage as it is contributing towards um, uh, broad genetic base because of the diversity in the loci so we can uh, count this as a broad genetic based uh, population are also known as uh, or because of the contribution towards this resistance it can be counted as it can contribute to high yield of the field crop compared to pure line breeding program and uh, coming to the steps in multi-line breeding program development of multi lines uh, first of all what we need to do is uh, selection of a, a suitable recurrent parent diverse parent and a suitable or a selection of a suitable donor parent when we cross these two we'll have f1 and f1 when cross to recurrent uh, parent it will uh, become back cross one okay and after back cross one or back cross and back cross one if we self it it will become bc1 f2 this is the population from which we can select the component lines of um, or also known as iso lines 
or uh, for, of the multi line breathing program <clears throat> okay this is then further mixed and used as a multi line breathing program so some of the advantages of uh, multi line breathing program is they are identical to recurrent parent because only one gene differences is only uh, in one loci and loss to cultivar is very low okay losses to cultivar is very low because uh, because there is less infestation of disease because uh, it is having broad genetic base it is better adaptability and so and so because of the <coughs> various contributions from and the different alleles and genetic isolines so it has various advantage the spreading of disease is slow okay uh, we have the reason for it <coughs> the spreading of disease is slow because they are having disease resistance for different strains of the uh, disease insect uh, said disease okay uh, it reduces the risk of homogenizing the pathogen population globally <coughs> Uh, say for example in case of uh, pure line selection if you grow only pure line varieties in whole all over the globe so it will be a great risk because uh, it will be easy for insect uh, pests to infest the whole uh, crop in the entire globe so uh, using this multi lines instead of pure line is uh, reducing the risk of homogenizing the pathogen population globally and then stabilizes it stabilizes and optimizes the production on farm <clears throat> it increases uh, by reducing the amount of uh, disease infestation and at the same time it increases the broad genetic base which is important for survivability adaptation and stabilization of the <clears throat> the produce and then we have uh, some of the disadvantage here is every every year we have to replace the seed because it gets de degenerated <coughs> the variety the isolines get degenerated easily in the next generation the production and maintenance is time taking job because it is a tedious job backcross breeding program is a tedious job it, it takes three to four years at least to produce a multi-line variety it has to be regularly reconstituted and new lines have to be continuously developed <coughs> new lines every uh, every year we have to reconstitute we have to develop <coughs> a new line seed certification poses difficulty because <coughs> in seed certification uniformity is a must a variety has to uh, a particular variety has to infer refer, refer its characteristics which in case of multiline variety because of having multiple characters in one loci it cannot be referred into the uh, some seed certification standards so it is a difficulty in such criteria <coughs> it is less attractive less uniform and costly method when compared to other uh, pure line selection and mass selection and coming to the achievements in India several multiline varieties like uh, <coughs> Kalyan Sola multi line lines 3, MLKS line, and KML line have been registered in uh, wheat from Punjab, and some of the varieties uh, which are uh, released in oats, wheat, and soybean peanuts in USA. So, if you have any questions, you can ask.